from the studios of Plan B, 104.5 FM. And the program name is Fresh Manna, from Spiritual Open in Heaven, a program that has begun barely two months now. And we have seen God moving on the airways, touching people, healing all kinds of sicknesses, and bringing salvation and deliverance unto those who are seeking for him? I am a Nigerian person, and I'm ready on the floor. Masai, I do a share. And that Friday, and I'm ready. I want to make a sense in this room. I want to make a sense here for two months now. To make a friend, fresh manner from spiritual open in heaven. Program book from on your me a sense in the Guanum. So I'm going to make a sense in this room. Sha, a prayer share program ya si. Eni pa me pray and a pray a ministry. Eti a dance ya a shenya me eni mo nyam. Ya wa wa nyami ni nisa a kya wa mo. Ya wa nyam wa nyami a sa wa mo ya die. Ya wa wa nswa. O nyami a kya sa che wa ma kuma sa wa mo mbra. Na wa mo me tye in sempa e mye ye pray mo. Sha. The friend of Reverend Richard Kusi, the apostle teacher of the end time. Na me ni me baba ku a ye friend of Sami pa ako for dike. Na ye ni adi jumadi kesi ebreu Sami odofu. Na di a ba ku a me pesa me kachi o odofu ni mre ise. Anya mistake kura se wa fidi e adha. E san se wa nyami susu kukura na wa si ye 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 brei mo. One one and one come and come and say for what fifty eight of plan B one of four point five. And the men found us and came with fifty eight every Sunday. And God bless them. Do not go ever for any kakra. It says that any young shall see them. But hey, what of four program gets here? You did pray when you prayed the other and what plan B ha one of four point five. I have to need fresh manna from spiritual open. Aya jumadi kesi ya a brandi ya ba kupa a wada ba kupa swa wa sponsor ya programi ya friendo nana asare yami enshia nana asare otongas akwash motos e wo betele junction star oil hono mnoa e wana ne garage e wo na brandi ya ba mi program just ba kupa na me chira di ya e wo bordo so. Na brandi ya yitra hodi kachira mese a na adishia kesi ya sei nyami ya mabimu nyansa kesi ya sei wawye ye breimu ana papa wode teha me sponsor na mide mwa ba radio so na a brandi ya yitra hodi ya huka edhi ya batira radio so sambre yi for the past two months now that's almost two months mekane sa nyana nyami enguso enshira ho Yamam Yamma who buys strong co. Now send the devil be catching when you and go a set da. Yami and Pedia was strong co. Now at the above would be a ministry, 
Say yem fan semba. And we yem pray embra wan awa jira. Shayari sa wudua among four and pray at the dance yet. Nana would chef a womb. Namintin and you can see a chilo. Now a juma so on pejan is so co ewa we yem pray. Nana, better was so I'm sorry. Me chewa numre so on co. Now never say when you went so so. Na me dia de se dia ato obi a wo tantie ye se che ka kira bia na ensha wo dia dia wo bi se wo beti bi dia bo ye wo beti mi a pray your line enye che e sa se po e kire bi bi se give you god loves a cheerful giver so it should come from your heart wo si wo dipa de se ni bia e ye mo ni ni Na se e kawa kuma se o pese wo bo aye ya. Wo da te me a pray in line. For the past two months now I but the radio you so. Ma chire chire ni ma be pray. Na che e mra e ko enti min te me e mo in send to fa. Na last week the enemy bon e to fa kakra. Na mi wiya e de de be de atoa so ama. O nya mi e shira wo be pray se wo da so a wo tie mi e nomre. When you move your machine, I was so, was so lonely. What the fuck? Ministry, I have prayed the triune ministries. A apostolic ministry, a revival ministry, a healing, a music. A dear Bakua, me person, me did tear tears when I saw me say, Yami, a ya duma, ya 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 the simui, ya was cook a sia, a ya pesia piano. When you bother said, If you are no pesa, won't bab a sia, ya mea sem, ya be a quiet amount. Next year, ya discussing the prayer ever to a jack. Nasha. And him dear, and who won't pass your pada, me pass me catch the water for. And the man for one sa and can't be here. Now go soon and tell me a bread and yada. Now we be in shira. Last week, ah, I am Friday. Me can send me bread and for spiritual discernment, discerning of spirit. Ah, we the a bunch of cats are my friend. Who 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 who? On your me at the two Macuma, so seven better radio, you so. Namin Chirasani, my way now at the four. Eh, who? Now, for the sake of time, Munti, Mabon the top of Kakanama progressing. Mabon at your four at your CSS. Bible, I'm at your CSS in this end time. There is going to be a great apostasy. Now, you can apostasy a chess and the back chin who every did you know. When you mean I'm a small poor poor, so I must poor a wood yet a busy one. We are pray him in first Timothy chapter 4, verses 1. Was it who will be dead? The prefer said a bra a dear chile and the papa to a woo a frigid yellow home. Now, sir, what would you a woo frigid yellow one? What would you a woo the cock or two in chetra a free demons? And I said in chetra. A brown who money and in that da a who the seducing spirit and deceptive spirit and a doctrines of demons. Now, a son said, Bible, I'm here to see a saint. I said, on the four year to me, a young to see a saint. And you have been praying and a serious prayer. Shall I make a summon chill before sending me at the me baba batraha. When you meet me at village to village, from churches to churches, and I know what is really happening in the body of Christ. And I am not just sitting here and talking from my mind what I feel, what I think. I have practicalized it. I have seen it. Now the America be at that and you know correct. A son said, the TMB your small for. It is not going to profit me in any way to lie to anybody. But I want to speak the mind of God. 
ani onyame su awosu kristo su awosu kuni mu e sanse ne ma e yira e wonyeye bre mu na se ne ma wo be wadi e yira e de ajidi fo omo unye jidi fo so be yedan e de me ba atie fo ti ase ese spiritual discernment is very important discerning of spirit once ability to be able to know who woman a tie case be a chi and who woman a tie in such an be a chi tell me here the spirit that is behind manifestation is very important na me ma at the point you say say designing of spirit will help you to be able to identify false prophets because the bible has spoken about false prophets i also made it very clear say designing of spirit ever to me abwao abwa identify false apostles na senyami ya duma next month i want to teach about the apostolic ministry the entire me person me ka apostolic ministry and say there are so many people that profess they are called apostles but they are not apostles and the men be the for any your case will be a smart for who an apostle of jesus is i am going to sit on the radio and i'm going to teach about who an apostle is and who an apostle is not i am going to talk about the apostolic ministry and some of the functions of the apostolic ministry sha me matie what you say say ebra apostle paul no time no there were still false apostles in the second corinthians 11:30 15 Paul can force apostles on what said. It is designing of spirit even one who why are we have false apostles? Now me say my dear point you say say anybody who self claim that he's apostle and he's not preaching Christ. He's not teaching Christ. He's a false apostle. I want to tell you. It he's a false apostle. And the apostle of Jesus Christ is the foundation of your teachings. Christ is the foundation regardless of the size of your church or regardless of your popularity you are false apostle i want to tell you because you see the title you can claim but it is based on function now ebresua remember the what you say said there are so many that has taken this title upon themselves but truly they are not apostle of jesus now me be when i am who an apostle is that who an apostle is not na obi am fa sa tight no an dada wa we ye bre mu am fa wan ko sheko na so se beji kuto beji tofe beji handkerchief beji perfume beji nia ma basa e pa se me kama o ti ase e da mo di be se tu asu kan se is any no spirit be ti be abo o am wan wo for stitches for the sake of my time i want to move pretty fast Na sha me dikai me to so catch that here for say because of the absence of false prophets because of the absence of false apostles false teachers and he has said who met me about by say nyame e ma hu hu mu hu hu tie me other four and this same time the black and the white are going to be together i want to tell you the truth In this end time darkness is going to go up but it is exactly the same way that the bible has prophesied that in this end time there's going to be a great revival ma me ta se ba ku enche o nti na me che che mu no anka sa no me ma ati effort ya se se that is one particular subject that has been so much misconstrued are your friend of the anointing na ende ani busumi ya ye besimu yi me pese bi bia wani about what an anointing is and what an anointing is not na in chechire we me bia wani am wo hu what an anointed man is and who is not an anointed man me sam wo sa ti ase se in chechire ye mu me che wo what is an anointed oil the history of the anointed oil tell me Na me chere chere wo abia wani ama wo the ingredients of the anointing oil na me do be run the bible mu 
Old Testament, I have plan upon that. Now, the one see upon Bufro. Now, when you have what you are saying, who said the anointing that we are talking about, anointing oil, mantles, handkerchiefs, they are all superstition. I want to tell you, they are superstition. And one thing I want you to understand is this irrespective of whoever is teaching this. And dear we are so very much into biblical illiteracy. In Acts chapter 17, verses 11, when Apostle Paul got to Berea, the Bereans did not just look at Apostle Paul for him to come and preach Christ and him crucified. We all know that that was the centrality of Paul's message. In Acts chapter 1, 17, 1 to 3, Paul has got into Thessalonica. The Thessalonicans did not listen to Paul. And the apostle Paul got into Berea. Now at the Berea, the people just said, okay, come and talk to us. We are going to look at it. And then we will check. I want you to be a Berean this evening. I don't want you to close your ears. I don't want you to flip the dime. But I want you to listen to me carefully. And I want you to get your pen and your paper down. Now, every time you be a bachelor, you will have one tears here. My lines are activated. You can call me 24 7. And I will help you to understand. Without much wasting time, me per se, me ma won tears here. The importance of studying the anointing. Number one. The subject anointing matter most in the varieties of reasons. The subject anointing, the anointing oil, mantles, handkerchief, what have you, it matter most. Why? Number one, the subject has been misconstrued, misinterpreted in Christendom with all manner of replacement instead of focus on the reality. The third person of the Godhead, his operations, his ministries, the gifts, and all that. Anointing, anointing, it has been misinterpreted in the Christian law with all manner of interpretations. Jeremy of the poor, now we actually every the reality, no hope. I am the person of the Holy Ghost. So the subject anointing worth study this evening. Number two, the subject is vital so that the New Testament church can understand that God used an important cultural symbols and practices. The subject anointing when you uncouple and you use some cultural symbols and the practices to foreshadow the entire work of the Holy Ghost, tell me, even though in the Old Testament the Spirit came upon certain individuals, Israel consecrated their priests and high priests. Tell me, one of the ten reasons why we want to study the anointing is this. The subject is very vital for us here because a closer study of the anointing has indicated to us that where the shadow, which is the oil, was used, God was teaching us about the reality that is the Holy Ghost coming upon men to fulfill divine assignment. Tell me. The study of the anointing is very important for us this evening because the anointing that was coming upon the Messiah, it was already prophesied in the Old Testament. Other four, the study of the anointing is very important subject because the anointing is epitomized in Christ. The anointing, anointing is summarized in Christ. One has to understand, he said, the whole Bible is the revelation of Jesus Christ. 
Na sete de bia mi ba tie fo ti ase no. When you read the Old Testament with the law in your mind, Christianity will be a set of rules and regulations to end the righteousness of God. But say what guy upon that that we Christ or what jini mo? You will see Christ in every single book. What we call shadows. Jimmy, or the four. And the study of the anointing is epitomized in Christ. The study of the anointing will help you so that you will stop idolizing and superstitious Christianity. The study of the anointing about bow. Ati mi abu wahu abo son som a abo kriso somu a anybody ya wera akose ayo mu anybody ya wera akose somu lo ayo mu anybody ya wera akose all sort of ayo ayo biada wa maketi biada I want to tell you it doesn't mix the biblical requirements and for the sake of my time I want to go further. Na in church any mu na be bia wani na the american wo beti ma see I want to talk a little bit about the history of the anointing The Bible tells me that the anointing and the anointing oil was very important component in the Old Testament the year here upon that anew Na she in the ancient times when the shepherds apparently take their sheep and they take them into pasture there were essence that apparently will climb on their wool and when they climb on their wool they will go into their ears and they will kill them they will disturb their insects so the shepherds normally will pour oil on them so that this kind of insects this kind of lice cannot go into the sheep and kill them So by the virtue of how the shepherds apparently were using this it was some sort of protection tell me and it was helping these sheep I'm giving you a little bit of the history Now when God apparently took the nation Israel from Egypt the Bible tells me in the Exodus chapter that there were a lot of things that God instructed Moses to do one of the things that God instructed Moses to do is the anointing oil now i want to take my test for the sake of my time today from exodus chapter 30 reading from verse 22 pretty fast exodus chapter 30 22 to 26 So moreover the Lord spoke unto Moses Take thou also thee the principal spices of pure myrrh 500 shekels and of sweet half sweet cinnamon half of it that is 250 and sweet calamus 250 shekels 24 and cassia 500 shekels after the shekel of sanctuary and of only are you only in him 25 and that shall make it an oil of holy ointment an ointment compound after the act of apothecary it should be a holy anointing 26 and that shall anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith and the act of the testimony Today I want to take this my test to give you some sort of the preparation of the anointing or your the ingredient. Now there's something I want the listeners to note. When God instructed Moses to prepare the holy oil, God specifically told Moses about the ingredient and the quantity. From this particular test here, you will know or notice that God told Moses to use 500 shekels of pure milk sweet cinnamon 250 sweet calamus 250 cassia 500 and olive oil oil extracted from olive seeds 
Now when you look into this particular test, God was very much particular about the holy oil. Now there's something I want you to understand. When God was apparently with this nation Israel, he told them to do so many things to be the Ark of Covenant, the tabernacle. And God gave the specific to Moses, the specifics to Moses that designed this exactly the same as the anointing oil. God told Moses to prepare this oil. And why did God tell Moses to prepare this oil? When God told Moses to prepare this oil, God told him that you will use this oil to sanctify the tabernacle. So we are going to look at the various kinds of things that the oil apparently were used, was used to do the sanctification or to consecrate. But before then, I want to give you a brief definition of what the anointing is. Now the dictionary, the encounter, define anointing as rub oil. Anointing or part of something. Usually the head or feet as part of religion ceremony. An anointing also means to install somebody officially or ceremonially in a position. It also means to smear or rub oil or oil substance. It also means to choose by as if it is a divine election. I'm just giving various definitions. Please listen to me carefully. Another definition of the anointing means to set people aside and endure them with the supernatural power for service. So these are various definitions that I have given to you concerning anointing. Now listen to me carefully. With respect to the ingredients, and Nehemiah, Nami, Ekachile Moses, he said, one fan ye sangu slay, Medikai Apoposo. Na ebra nyami kachile Moses he said, one fasan yama wei enye ngosranu. Na o nyami pese Moses he tia siye se, and ye honi o ye wa mi pese o piada ebe frem. Na she, ebra nche che ni kosomo, meme wat siya siye wu se, a dia o nyami, ama ye formula no, Wapia and Timimpo and Yabi and Fra. A sense as a will ye be fra a ye fake. It doesn't meet the biblical requirements. And apart from say it meeting the biblical requirements, God specifically spoke to Moses, said the anointing oil, the holy anointing, it cannot be imitated. I want to tell you. So I want to give you some few observations, but I want to go on. Let's look at some of the things. That apparently were consecrated or anointed. Number one, when God told Moses to prepare this oil, God told Moses that he was supposed to use to cleanse or to consecrate the tabernacle. So the things include tabernacle and everything that were in the tent. God told Moses that he should consecrate everything including the altars, the brazen lava, the brazen altar. For the sake of my time, I'm not going to give you test. But one important thing, I'm a person what he has seen, he said, when God asked Moses to prepare this oil, the oil was supposed to be used to consecrate the things that were in the tabernacle. Let's look at those who were also anointed in the Old Testament. Persons were also anointed with the oil. The person would tell me here on the floor. Number one, high priests were anointed with oil. In Exodus chapter 29 verse 9. In Exodus chapter 29 verses 29. You will see high priest Aaron. He was anointed. Aaron's sons were all anointed the priests. In Esther chapter 28 verse 41. In Esther chapter 30 verses 30. 
In Exodus chapter 40, 30 to 15, the high priests were also anointed. Let's come to the categories of people that were anointed. We are looking at them. Kings were also anointed. The nation Israel had a lot of kings. But first I want to start with Saul. The Bible tells me that at a particular point in time, the nation Israel had requested for king. And God instructed a prophet, his name was called Samuel, to anoint a young man, and his name was called Saul. So in 1 Samuel chapter 10, verses 1, the Bible tells me that Saul was anointed with oil. Listen to me carefully. Now there are various kinds of horns. We have plastic horns. We have gold horns. We have all manner of horns that are used. I want you to listen to me carefully. When Saul apparently was anointed with the shadow, which is the oil, we will look at the effect of that oil on Saul pretty shortly. Just listen to me, beloved. David was also anointed. My Bible tells me at a particular point in time, Saul became disobedient. And God instructed the prophet Samuel to go into a family, Jesse's family, and to anoint one of his sons. You can see this in 1 Samuel chapter 16. The Bible tells me that as Saul became disobedient and God instructed Samuel to go to Jesse's family, Jesse has a lot of sons. He has Abedidat, he has Eliab, he has Shama. And all these people, God rejected them. But there was this young, handsome man who apparently was the last born of the Jesse family. And he was even not counted. He was on the shepherd. And when God apparently rejected all of these boys, he asked, the prophet to ask J.C. whether are all this your son. You can see this story in First Samuel chapter 16. Now another one was also anointed, Solomon. You can go on and on and on and on and on. And you will see the kings were anointed. Now there's something I want you to understand. You see revelation is progressive in nature. So any time that God apparently asked the prophet Samuel to anoint these kings I was talking to you about. So, David, the reality which is the spirit of the Lord came upon them. I want to give you something for you to know this evening. First of all, let's look at Saul. The Bible tells me that when Samuel anointed Saul, in 1 Samuel chapter 10 verse 10, the spirit of the Lord came upon Saul and Paul Saul prophesied. When you go into 1 Samuel chapter 16, reading from verse 13, you will see that the spirit of the Lord also came upon David. So the question I want to ask people this evening is, what apparently was God really teaching us? I have already indicated on the airways that the subject anointing and the anointed oils and the mantles and all handkerchiefs, they are indeed another form of superstition. And if you are not careful in this same time, you are going to be carried away. You see, the problem that we have is this. We are not ready to sort of to go into the scriptures and to learn what exactly God is teaching us. But there's something I want you to understand. The Bible tells me that the Apostle Paul has got into Athens. In the chapter 17. And these Athenians were superstitious. But when he apparently Paul spoke unto them, he told them that this their superstition is another form of ignorance. And he asked them that they should repent. Because God indeed thrown his face upon superstition. But for the reason why you have been carried away by this end time is you are not ready to search for the truth. 
And that is the main reason why the Lord has sent us. So that we can open your eye for you to know the truth. We can open your spiritual understanding. So you can know. The Apostle Paul prayed a very simple prayer for the church of Colossians. In Colossians chapter 1 verses 9. Or so we see not to pray for you. That you may be filled with the knowledge of his will. In all wisdom and spiritual understanding. God apparently wants us to know his will. In all wisdom, divine wisdom and spiritual understanding. So the subject anointing is something that I'm dissecting and going into details. But I want you to gradually follow me. So that you can understand this subject very important. So that you are not carried away by blue oil. You are not carried away by green oil. You are not carried away by sober oil. You are not carried away by mantles. Israel mantle, another form of superstition that has taken this country. So people go and buy Israel mantle. And people are paying 10 million for Israel mantle. The Lord tells me to tell you it is a superstition. You have to repent from this and accept the truth. There is no way in the book of Acts that you will see the apostles were moving and giving mantles to people. There is no way you are going to see in the book of Acts that the apostles were roaming for places and they were anointing people with oil. Every time I come here, I want you to understand something. If you think you disagree with me, take your time and go into the book of Acts. The Acts of the Apostles gives us a preview of the history of the church. And if you want to understand the history of the church, then you got to spend your time and to look into the Acts of the Apostles. From Acts chapter 1 up to 28, there is no way you are going to see that the Apostles were selling green oil, that the Apostles were selling blue oil, that the apostles were selling good luck oil. The apostles were selling her mantles. The apostles were selling handkerchief. The apostles were giving toffee. The apostles were giving a quantity. It is a superstition. And you better repent from this. I want to tell you. The reason why you have not been able to experience Jesus is this. The superstition is too much for you. Today, I want you to know that the oil that God instructed Moses to prepare, the first observation I want you to note, one, it was divinely prescribed that it was God who gave Moses the formula to prepare. There is no oil in the market that has these divine ingredients. Does not even have the quantity. So number one, the oil that is in the market, they are of pitch. I want to tell you, and it does not meet the biblical requirements. The reason is this: God apparently prescribed the ingredients, and we see that in Exodus chapter thirty, from twenty-three to twenty-five. Number two, the formula was given by God to Moses. The oil was not even prepared by Moses. Moses with all his acumen in leadership. He did not prepare the oil. But God apparently gave the formula. For the preparation of the oil. There is no oil in the market. That God has given the formula to be prepared. As I was preparing today to come to the studio. Interestingly I saw something on the social media. And I saw somebody. Saying all kinds of oil. Come and use them to pray. And I ask myself one simple question. Those oil, what is the formula? The formula was given by God to Moses. It was divinely prepared, prescribed. Number three, it was a compound that was done by priests. Number four, it was a holy anointing forever. Number five, which I want to emphasize. In Exodus chapter 30, 32, God for one of imitation. He said it cannot be imitated. Number three. It cannot be put on strangers. 
All these things are critical observation that I want believers to understand this evening. That if anybody gives you any oil, I want to tell you it is a superstition. And the earlier you repent, the better for you. All those oil that are in the market, wherever that they come from, it does not have a divine prescription. All those oil that are in the market, they are imitated one, irrespective of whatever name is given. Whether the person went to Israel to bring it, they are all imitated one. I want to tell you the truth. Now, if in this dispensation, oil is not even used. In this dispensation, we are in the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. But I don't want the teachings to be clumsy for listeners. That is the main reason why I seem to buttress my points. I want you to observe this. That when God instructed Moses to prepare the oil, it was a divine prescription. The formula was given by God to Moses. God forewarned Moses that it must not be imitated. So you see, all these things, it makes you to understand that the oil that you have put your confidence, it does not even have these biblical requirements. My beloved, I want you to understand something. You have to be very careful in this same time. Because in this same time, there are all manner of things that people are going to do that can carry your faith. If you are not going to listen to me, beloved, you will spend all your money in this oil. But a day is coming. The kind of demonic spirit that are working through this oil. It is the same demonic spirit that will fight you. And fight your children. I want you to understand. The oil that God asked Moses to prepare in Exodus chapter 30. Verses 25 to 26. Where you see the story there. God asked that it cannot be imitated. The formula was also given. I want you to know this, my beloved. All this oil we are talking about, as that progresses, you are going to know that it is just a symbol that represents the Holy Ghost. As I said last week, that the oil is one of the symbols of the Holy Spirit. So the anointing and the anointing oil and all manner of mantles, handkerchiefs and other things that are scripted into Christianity in this nation, they are another form of superstition to throw you overboard. And until you know the truth, you cannot be transformed. As time goes on, you are going to come to understand that there's one particular book of, we call the book of Judges. And at a particular point in time, when the nation Israel apparently were disobedient, God, listen to me carefully, Raise deliverers, raise saviors, so that they can help them to deliver them from their enemies. I want you to understand this. None of these deliverers in the book of Judges and oil was put on them. I want you to think about this, my beloved. I want you to think about this, my beloved. The Bible tells me in Judges chapter 3, Verses 10, that Obner was apparently anointed by the Spirit of the Lord. Listen to me carefully, my beloved. In Judges chapter 6, verse 34, Gideon was anointed directly by the Spirit of the Lord. Jephthah. In Judges chapter 11, 29, he was anointed by the Spirit of the Lord. And another judge I want to talk to you about this evening, Samson. You can look at Judges 13, Judges 15, 14. The Spirit of the Lord was mighty. So you see, Revelation is progressing. So when God apparently was talking to us about the oil in the Old Testament, He was revealing the reality, which is the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost. There is no way, my beloved, that Jesus instructed it's apostles to go and preach and use oil to put on people. That's what I've specified. There's no way that the apostles wrote in their epistles that they asked people to put green oil, to put sober oil, 
to put all manner of oils. I want to tell you they are superstition. And until you repent from this and crave to the truth, you'll be carried away by this end time. I know somebody is going to tell me, oh, when I use the oil, it works. But I told you the last week that what spirit is behind that manifestation? There is something that, in part, has been carrying a lot of people away in the same time. Pragmatism. When he uses something and it works, that person thinks and feels that it has been approved by God. I want to tell you, there has been a lot of manifestation that has taken place in the Bible. But the manifestation apparently did not come from the Holy Ghost. God is speaking to you this evening that your faith cannot be in these immaterial things. Your faith can be, not be in these inanimate things. These are another form of superstitions that is creeping into Christianity in this country. And I want you to come to this understanding until you search for the truth like the period. Until you search for the truth and learn from the truth, you'll be carried away in the same time. I have moved from churches to churches. I have seen the Lord moving mighty healing. I have seen the Lord moving mighty in deliverance. I have seen creative miracles. I have seen healings upon healings. And none of these healings has been done through oil. One of the saddest things that has killed my mind when the Lord start to take me from churches to churches, even the so-called Pentecostal and charismatic ministries, you will see all you at their platforms. The Lord is asking me to ask you, pastors, what is happening to the reality, the Holy Ghost? Jesus left us with the Holy Spirit. The book of us, the apostles were filled with the Holy Ghost. In the book of us, the apostles make sure that everybody was filled with the Holy Ghost. One interesting thing that I have found is this. When I move from churches to churches to even do revival, and you will see all you being placed on people, and not even the reality is even manifested. That tells you that God is not approving what you are doing. We are living at the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. The Bible tells me that three dispensation for the Godhead. The Old Testament is the dispensation of the Father. The gospel's account after the book of Acts is the dispensation of the Son. From the book of Acts of the Revelation is the dispensation of the Holy Ghost. The reason why your life has not been catapulted to another level is this. You are thinking so very much about the shadow. You are thinking so very much about the magical portion. You are thinking so very much about some mantle somebody has to give it to you. But as time goes on, I'm going to let you understand that the ingredients of this anointing, they all has a representation. I have seen a lot of people that are looking for anointing for God's work. And they are going to pay mantle, is a mantle, for 50 million, 20 million. I want to tell you that it is a superstition. The Lord God does not dwell in the temples made with hands. Neither will the Lord God dwell in mantles until you grow to know who the Holy Ghost is. Until you submit and surrender your way to the Holy Spirit. You can never have the anointing. I want to tell you the truth. God will not put his anointing on vessels that are not consecrated. God will not put his anointing on vessels that are not sanctified. Beloved, this evening I want you to understand this. It breaks the heart of the Lord that after all that he has come to do so that you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost and grown up to know the Holy Spirit, the third person of the divine Godhead, you are putting your confidence in this superstition shadows which neither of the apostles approved. Lord Jesus Christ approved. I know there are a lot of testes that is in the New Testament. That they are all you for praying. But I want to hold it for the meantime. I just want you to, to continue to listen to me. Every Friday until we enter next month. And by the time I will finish. 
I know you are going to be imparted. I have gone from churches to churches to teach this. And after I have finished, I have seen God moving mighty in the church and pouring his anointing of the Holy Ghost in the whole church, including even children. I have seen with my eye. I have seen with my eye. I'm not here exaggerating. So what is happening to the church of Jesus? That all this superstition has came into Christendom. So that when I see people rushing onto various kinds of shops, they are going to buy all kinds of oil. And I look at them and my heart breaks. Because some so-called false prophet somewhere, some false apostle somewhere, is asking you to bring oil. Show me where in the New Testament. Show me where in the book of Acts that the apostles ask people that they should use oil. I am ready to meet everybody to open my eye. Maybe I have not seen it. I am sitting here as a messenger of the Lord and the Lord is pouring out his heart unto you this evening. That stop these superstitious practices and get to know who the Holy Ghost is. The anointing and the anointing oil or simply Literally means the third person of the divine Godhead, who is the Holy Spirit, the personality of the Holy Spirit, the case of the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the emblems of the Holy Spirit. My time is about to be up. I want to end today, but I want you to understand this. Take note of the ingredients. And take note the observation, the principle that God says that the anointing cannot be imitated. It was divinely given. And it was not to be put on strangers. Take note in the book of Judges that the reality is the spirit of the Lord. If I meet you next week, I'm going to progress in these teachings. I want you to prepare yourself any questions. And call me later and ask me, and I'll be a humble servant to open your eyes unto the truth. The number is 0247 24 96. I want to conclude by saying this that the subject anointing is the third person of the divine Godhead, the Holy Ghost. Do you know him? Do you know his gifts? Do you know that your ass has been quenching him? Do you know him? 0247 24 I think I have to give you another line. 0244 99 0236 I want you to call me on 0244 99 0236 and I want to talk to you. All those who are sick. I want you to call me so that I pray for you. I want you to understand something my beloved. That we are living in the end time. Be careful. Or whatever oil you somebody call it. It is a superstition. Hello. Amen. Where do you stay? Oh, if I'm out here. Let me pray for you. You have to call the line back again. The son of us, son of us. Let me pray for you. One of the things I don't understand is this. We have a limited time of this airways. When we pray for you and you receive healing, call us. When we pray for you and you see that the Lord is touching you and you are not all that well, call the us. We will show you where the ministry is. Healing under the will of the Holy Ghost. It can be instant or progressive. It's the will of the Holy Spirit. 
I pray that the Lord will touch you. You say you are sick, you got to call on me again. 0244-990236. In the name of Jesus, be touched by the power of the Spirit. Hello, Mama. You got to call back the line again, okay? Hello. Amen. Hello. 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 Amen. That's okay. Thank you very much, brother. Why are you calling from? Okay, that's fine. Continue listening to the anointing teaching this month. Okay? There's a lot of... The ministry is located at the new site, the one year. Come to 25. Yes. Yes, the new site, the one year site. If you call our line, we will direct you. Okay? All right, that's fine. 024... Four nine nine zero two three six. I have just two minutes to wrap up. Hello. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah. Good evening, sir. Oh, you might not call in from where? Oh, you've called us before? Okay. Yes, how do I help you, sir? Okay, that's fine. Okay, we have a limited time, so we'll, we'll ask you to pay us for this. Okay? 0244-990236. The subject anointing is going to continue next week. I want to dig so much into that teachings because of the superstition in this country. Hello. Good evening, Sada Fossi. Yeah. That's okay, Richard. I pray that the Lord will touch you, okay? Uh, have you accepted Jesus? You got to call back our line again so that we'll show you where you are. You come and listen to the word of God, okay? And you're growing the faith. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, God bless you. All right, hello. 0244-990236, yes, hello. Good evening. Yes. You got to call back our line again. Our time is up so that we can talk to you, okay? 0244-990236. The anointing teaching is a serious teaching. Today, I have just opened your eyes to a little bit. There's more coming. If only you are going to follow us progressively, it will help you. We are living in the end time. Be careful that you are not carried away by superstition. There are so many people that think they are in the church, but they are in the shrines, as I've been telling you. Be careful. My time is up. I'm coming back next week, if the Lord willing, to continue the anointing teaching. 0244 The program was brought to you by Khan Ketisi of Aquash Motors. It's located at Bechele Junction. Manasari, I salute you. If I say, when you insult Chia Madame for Bako, somebody so goes for so for. I will greet him and go, Paul Dogita, Yaminshia Papa, Yaminshia Papa for your heart. God bless all of you until we meet here next week. My name is Reverend Richard Kusi. Shalom and peace be unto you. Bye bye.